Hey, how's it going guys? Uh, it's Joe Glines, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate here. Uh, I mentioned li earlier this week I released a video using a notify function from Guarble, and uh, while I like it and it does a lot of stuff, it was very convoluted, not well documented, um, also quirky because you could have up to 25, but it was uh, the code itself was just kind of cumbersome. Uh, but mainly it was the the non-documentation of the stuff and two-letter abbreviations for things that just you, you'd have to memorize on what they mean. Um, and so I asked Maestro to take a look at it, and he overall liked the uh, the concept. Um, and of course, he he uh, designed a class, and uh, I'm going to work through. Let me go to the actual Notify class he wrote. Um, he has some, some decent documentation in here of how to use it. Um, I'm going to go through some of the basics of it, um, and then... In his actual GitHub file, I think there's a lot more code because there's an example, but this is the actual class. Um, well, I should say this is the class. And then what he did, by the way, was a cool tip is he put this function. No, this isn't it. Um, he made a function. Yeah, there's a notify function there. And that allows you to not have to use the include um, because um, if you shove it in your library like I did, um, Normally, you wouldn't have to use an include, but in a class, because classes aren't set up that way, it doesn't work. But he just added a, a function into his class with the same name, and it, you, it creates an instance of the class, I think, and everything. But it's cool because it avoids you having to use the include statement if you don't want to use it. Um, there are some a couple subtle differences, but basic. So he got it down to 144 lines, and I honestly, I think he could compress it more, and he probably will at some point because... He doesn't like having, you know, tons of stuff on different lines. Um, and actually, so what we got, like 30 of documentation, right? So it could be smaller. But anyway, let's uh, dive into using the tool. Um, to start off, if if all else, um, here's one of the different instances, and, and you can do it two different ways. One is you could have, you can instantiate it here up above and create a notify, and then you can call to the object this way and you could do several like i could do it like this and i only have to instantiate it once oops once um and then you can call to it multiple times and let me let me actually do a demo here so i'm going to launch it run it so the, here are three text message boxes down here thankfully i i looked and i don't have my um zoom window covering it like i did that though the webcam covering it um it also it's set to default i think it doesn't go away or maybe it goes away in 30 seconds i can't remember which one but um let me reload here uh, that was just to give you an example the other way is if if you want to keep it on one line because for me more often than not i'm going to use this with just one line one notify and not multiple times so i can save this reload it and run it and notice it works the same way um and this just allows me i don't have to have this up above first and do it here. So from now on, we're just gonna be playing with like one or two of these and adding functionality to it. Um, you know what, let me go back to notify and zoom in this a little bit and then grab the thing just to have as a reminder for us as we work through the other one. All right, um, so um, there is actually, there's there's one other setting that's in here, I believe that we could add uh, the uh, margin, I think, but um, I'm not gonna play with that. You can figure that out, it's simple. You just pass a parameter, but um, let's so animate. Oh, and actually I didn't grab enough. Um, let me go back. There is, uh, is, that, is that me or does that keep closing on itself? There's, uh, yeah, bottom, left, center, blend, some of these work together and some of them um work differently so let me go back into here yeah oh that's interesting i must be closing it some but um so now we're we're into the i think i'm supposed to have here a comma yeah here we go um, and we're going to add uh animate and then a colon um, and here it's it says it's a string we're going to add this and let's do um right let's just see what that does I save it, reload it, and now when I run it, notice it came in from the right side and moved over, right? Let me hit it again. You'll see they're, they're moving in from the right to the left. Um, let's change this now to left. Left, save, reload, run. So notice now they start from the left. It's really fast, and I think there is a way, um, let's see, is there a speed? There's something with speed. Show delay. How long it takes for this? Let's, let's give that a try. Um, so here you add a comma, show delay, and colon, 
I, actually, that's a number, so it probably doesn't need the quotes. So let's say 1,000, let's give that a try, save, run. So now notice, notice how it now it's nice and slow, right? We can see, let's do a left and let's do a, a right directly after that. There we go. Yeah, it's not, that's, I think that's, that's pretty slick. Um, so that's the slow, slow huh. show delay slows down the speed on, on how it takes the animation. Um, the, I think, let me comment this one out. I think blend, I think was pretty cool. These, by the way, he, he found this animate class, uh, in windows. And so he's leveraging, he's not doing all the stuff. Windows has this built in and he's just, he had uh, uh, basically looked at it and kind of wrapped it in his class to say, hey, you know, when I type this, because it had a obscure number that you would put in there. Let's do the blend. There we go. Look at that blend. It kind of, it, it reminds me of like in a video um, where you fade in or something, right? So there's the blend. Um, center, I think, was also a little interesting. Kind of starts in the, in the middle, goes out. So there's several cool ways, and as he mentions, they interact with it. But I want to get more into the functionality, how to use it, not the "Wow, look at this!" Right? Um, even though I, I am very impressed, it's, it's I was stoked when he did it. It's very cool stuff. Um, let's uh, let's add an icon. So I'm going to do comma icon, um, and then the icon which I did in my <clears throat> the same video when I mentioned notify. There's that shell. Um, you know, I wish I had. I don't have it here, and I, I had to actually reinstall Studio the other day, so it's not in my previous clips. Maybe it's in site though, because I know I had opened it in it. Let me see if I can pull it up real quickly. The, um, no, of course not. Um, anyway. All right, so I pause, I just want to show it. This, this script icons, um, this shell 32.dll, which is located, I think in your, what, your win32 folder, I forget, but the, um, the number that you put here, so number 300 is this arrow, I believe, where's 300? Here's this green arrow. So um, when I put icon, ah, that was interesting, 300, I'm gonna save, reload, and run it. Notice the icon up here, right? Now the icon, um, this is, it's, it's up in a higher area, right? I think you can actually control Size, that's the size of the message text. Icon size, okay. So comma, icon size equals, uh, let's say 50. I don't I don't recall like, ooh, missing key. Oh, because I did an equal. I, I keep thinking I'm in a function, right? But I'm, I'm in an object. Um, there we go. So I made it, that's a decent size. I think, you know, I wouldn't want it any bigger than that, that's for sure. Um, but Again, compared to when you look at this, compared to the other notify function that had these two letter abbreviations, which who know, I, you know, I think the guy, I'm not knocking him, right? He did a, a cool job overall, but this is so much more intuitive to me and so much easier to understand uh, that I just love this, the way it's laid out. So let's, uh, let's do um, the size of the, let's do a title. Cause uh, let's add a title here. Yeah, there it is, title colon. Hello world. I can get rid of this guy now. So save, reload, run. Now notice my hello world is up above. Now the um the title is smaller than the body. So I'm gonna do two things here at once. Let's do I think it's title size. Yeah. Title size. Colon and let's say that's uh fourteen. And I think it's just size. Yeah, size is 12, because I like having the, the, the actual text a little smaller. So let me run it. There we go, now I've reversed it, right? My title's bigger, my body text is smaller. Um, and notice also here, we could we could put your text here, a line, a new line, I should say, to be accurate. Your text here, and more here. So you can do multi-line stuff, it'll adapt, we can run multiple ones. It, it also, well, let's get into this, let's let's add some, uh, the timing for it to disappear, right? Because this is another really cool thing. So let me do comma, um, where is it? Is it time? Sound, time, oh, it's just time, time. Um, Yeah, and it's in milliseconds, so we're gonna say 3,000 to have it stay up for three seconds. Uh, let's make it 2,000. 
reload run. So now it's up, one, two, and it's gone, right? So if we had multiple of these, let's do three. We're gonna make this one for four seconds, one second. Let's see, that's the third one. Now let's make this one one second, this one five, six seconds. It's gonna be last, but it's gonna, um, and let's say, let's help us understand which one we're in here. Third. Second. And first, save, reload, run. Now watch how these I guess the first one, it took so long, so this is interesting. The first one, it took so long to draw it because I have the speed here at a thousand that by the time it was there, it was gone, right? So I would never probably want to have this the same as that. Let's make that two. Well, that should be okay. So it'll have a second there. So that's there, there. Oh, and my second one, apparently. Oh, that's interesting. Show delay, a thousand, four thousand. Yeah, I, you know what? Did I save, reload? Oh, you know what? No, no, no. Okay, my bad. What happened was because let's you know what? Let's let's help. Let's add some color here. It'll really help uh, make it pop out. So um, let's do background. Yeah, background. Oops. Zero x. We'll do this in like a red. So that's ff zero zero zero. Is that right? Yeah. Now I'm gonna borrow from this one and we'll make this one that lime green. Let's see, actually I can add two zeros here and delete two here, that should make that green. And let's do it again here and we'll make this one blue by moving these guys to the end. Now it'll be a little easier because um, you'll notice the um that second one let's make it last a little longer than two seconds right let's say three five and six what i was trying to demonstrate is uh they stack but the second one watch it goes away and they drop down right that's not like the other one they would just stay there um Maceworth really didn't like the fact that hey if you had a bunch of these let's do a couple here run it a couple times um, and again, that that they um they don't pay attention to what's there and they don't drop down. And so this actually pays attention to how many are on the screen and it's gonna um, keep up with that. So I think that that's pretty slick. Um, let's see, what else we got in here that's an easy one? Flash is, a, is an interesting one. Let's get rid of these. Let's do flash. Actually, let's get rid of the back. Well, I actually, actually I think flash will take into account flash. Now I don't recall flash, flashes. Um, and unfortunately, I I cut a little too short there. Oh, flash is a time. Let me get this a little bigger just to, so I don't do that again. So, flash. Oh, a flash color. Interesting. So, I actually, I don't recall what flash 1000 does. Of course, I could read, but let's just see what it does. Oh, interesting. So, it does flash number, changes the color. That's right. Actually, I remember talking to him now. Flash color allows you to dictate the second color. Um, this built into it, there, it actually has a built thing. The flash looks at how deep the color is and, and goes up a bit, I think. But if you're into that spectrum, like FF is, right? If this was like a 33, which is a horrendous color, let's say, uh, 77, let's see what that looks like. All right, that's a little better. Deep red, um, it should be like a, oh, maybe not, I don't know. Oh. Hold on, one, two. Yeah, I did that right, one, two, one, two. Anyway, you get the idea, it changes, it, it changes the color. Or, from his documentation here, we could, we could f tell it what color we want the second color to be. So here, I'm going to change this to move to make it green. Now it should be um, the first color I picked and then the second color. And clearly I did something wrong. Um, that's the color notification you'll be flashing. Flash. Oh, because the first one is a time. Oh, and I got rid of the, the time. Wait, flash background, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Okay, this is 1,000 comma flash background. 
Flash, where is it? Flash color. Oh, flash color. Sorry, not background. There we go. Oops, colon. All right, now let's give this a whirl. There we go. Now we're controlling the color, um, although it didn't look like that green to me. Uh, oh, because I have the background set to that. Let's make this back to FF. That's the red. And that, let's make this this ugly green. Huh. Well, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I'll ask him what's going on here. Um, I'm not sure. Let me read here. It sets the color, the second color of your notification will change to when flashing. Flash color. I, that sure looks like I, oh, I don't have quotes around it. Let's see if that matters. I would not have thought this would have required the double quotes around them. I got to think both of them is to say um, background, background. Yeah, they both should have been in quotes. Wow, there we go. Holy cow. Yeah, so my bad. Sorry. Um, I'm used to, I, I thought, um, usually when you see these things, they're not in double quotes, but whatever. Okay, we got that working. Cool. Let's uh, let's get rid of some of this stuff just to, to streamline it. You know what? Let's knock it down to, let's leave the title. We'll get rid of all this stuff. Um, and let's do, um, radius was interesting. Radius. Um, I, does it give an example here? Radius uh, 10. This deals with the rounding of the corners. So let's make that a little bigger so we can, oops, see how much it rounds the corners. Um, so see the corners of the notification are round now instead, which it, it honestly makes it look a little more polished, right? A little more sophisticated or advanced, um, which is cool. Um, sound, so you can have it, uh, do a sound and this one if you do sound in the uh thankfully he explained this to me the uh, the number you put in i don't know if you guys will be able to hear it but it'll be a beep and the th number is the frequency so that just did a beep it's a low beep but um the 3000 is a very high beep um so anyway you can you can mess with the range there or you could put a path into a file um i think i have it down below um because I was playing with this earlier. I just didn't want to leverage it. Here's a path to a wave file. Mm. Sorry, my allergies, I was sneezing. Um, I put a path to the wave file in here. So instead of putting the number, we're gonna put in a path to file. Hopefully you can hear this, but it's, it's playing that audio file, which I think is pretty slick. Um, because sometimes I want this notification, but isn't it great if you're not looking to have an audio file play for you, right? So I think that's pretty cool. Now, let me get in a little bit to more advanced stuff. Um, there's some stuff he added that I hadn't expected at first, but he added the ability to have like message boxes. Um, so let me, uh, let me see, I'm trying to go from memory here. Um, let me, let me see my, here we go. Oh, buttons, okay. So I'm gonna borrow this just cause uh, I'm lazy. And you know what? I got to add, I'll add it in here. Buttons, I don't think is documented. Yeah, because we added that and he did this on the fly in minute, in like three minutes. So it's insane. So, oops, an extra comma there. So buttons, and here you'd put what, what button you want, right? One, two, three or more, right? Whatever. It doesn't, uh, this is the button. So I'm going to save this, reload it when I run it. Now notice there are buttons, right? And these buttons here, I'll show you here the, in a minute the, the um, function that you have to add to make it work, but I can click one, oops, and it, and it shows you, hey, one was clicked, right? Um, if I click two, hey, two was clicked. And if I click three or more, three or more was clicked, right? And all you have to do is, uh, have it what it does is the class looks for this click function um and then you'd put in logic so this is telling you hey show what button was clicked and here this is an example here of how you would do logic hey if uh if this window like you can get the id from the window so if we actually did use his message box um hopefully it'll it'll work here we, we had a little problem with it the other day uh, let me let me rerun this and show you all the info that's in here so when we click this um here is all the info he met Maestrix get his message box function. 
it, uh, if it's a variable, it will show you the value, but if it's an object, it'll like iterate over it like this. So it's, it's very slick and cool to have. But um, this is, shows you all the information that's available. And um, he even pointed out, like you can add any key value pair into that object and it will be available here. So if you just wanted to add um, anything to this to say like uh, right here, and I'm, I'm just gonna make up something, right? I'm gonna say duck colon frog. Let's put it this one, frog and a comma here. When I say reload, run it. Now when I click um, in here, here's duck equals frog, right? So you get the idea and all this stuff will get passed into that object and then you can access it in any way you want and know which one of these things you clicked, right? You can build some logic around which, which notification window was it? You know what, hey, if that gets clicked, I wanna close the script, I wanna launch something, I wanna blow up something, right? <laughs> Whatever you want. Um, so I was I was stoked after he added these how simple it was because uh, now it gives you some like if then logic on your notification of you know what like I want you could make a snooze button right and just say hey just snooze this rerun it here in thirty seconds right or three minutes or whatever maybe you have two buttons snooze and snooze for five minutes and snooze for thirty minutes um, so kind of like an Outlook how you can you know run a snooze anyway let me let me come over here. I think we covered the vast majority of these. Progress, um, I, he has a working example of that. I'm not gonna try to do that one here, but you can do like a progress bar, it's pretty cool. Uh, but you do need some other, I think, text uh, code with that. Uh, show delay, sound, time, title. Yeah, we, we cover the title, color, right? So you can change the font. Um, you can change the color of the font. Let's Let's come back in here, get rid of this. And let's add a uh, color um, and oh good, I have these and look at that, they're not in quotes. I was I was messing up there. Um, color. Let me wrap this in quotes. So now the title or or sorry, the cuts the color is the the, the message body font and then title color, I think it's called, yeah, title color. Title color, colon, I'm gonna put that there for now and then let's wrap it and let's change this to be, even though I would never do this, we'll make it red. So rerun it and now we have a red title um, with green text in a large, crazy large arrow, or icon, icon size. Let's make that eh, 15, let's see what that does. That might look a little more reasonable. There we go. So again, I think this is pretty slick. It's all put into a class. Um, again, you can put it in your library and then reference it. Um, yeah, I'm stoked. I, I think this is so much more intuitive than that other notification function. Even though I like the other one, this one is much more concise um, and, it's easy, you know, not everything comes to mind perfectly, but when you read it, you're like, oh yeah, I know what that does, right? Which is, that's that's one of the, the biggest things. Um, and just remember, you either need to instantiate it up here or you can do it in this format here. Um, oh, there's my margin. Um, I think the margin, let's say 25. The five is default, but it, um, so I think that spaces them apart. Let's say, uh, yeah, whatever, let's do zero. No. Huh. Actually, I'll have to ask him. Um, that doesn't seem to be doing much if it is, but um, I, I hadn't played with it. Uh, so I'm not sure what the margin is. Did he mention it here in the, uh, in his thing? No, at least it's not up not up here, I was hoping. Uh, but I, I gotta think it has something to do with the distance it, it has either of the text to the edge, like the padding, or the distance between these things. So let, let me do one more example where I make it a, a crazy number. Let's see if that helps at all. Oops. No, so I'm not sure what what that's doing. Um, I'll I'll try to get I'll add it get it added to the documentation. So anyway, hope that helps. Cheers and thanks again, Maestro. This is very very cool. Um, I think Jackie and I I was talking to him. 
we're going to do a podcast comparing the two versions and why, you know, this is, I think, a really good reason and demonstration of how if you build things in an object in the class, it's just so much more intuitive, easier to maintain, easier to update. Um, the second one would be using uh, using longer variable names instead of having two letter abbreviations, which make it so abstract and hard to understand what they're doing, right? And hard to remember. So using longer names uh, really, really helps with that. All right, cheers.